I built a simple mobile app, scaled it to $44,000 in monthly recurring revenue, and then I sold the business. The app had one simple feature that solved one painful problem for a large number of people. I didn't raise any VC funding. I didn't take outside investment. I didn't even have a massive team. It was just me, my phone, and one outsourced developer. And the craziest part is, I didn't write a single line of code. So in this video, I'm gonna break down absolutely everything. How I came up with the app idea, how I validated that idea, how I built it without writing a single line of code, how I marketed the app and got millions and millions of views on TikTok, how I monetized the app effectively, sold that app to a massive app studio, and everything I learned along the way. I'm not a genius, but if you watch this video and follow these steps, you can do the same with your mobile app idea and you can see results like mine. Because I messed up a lot and it took me a lot longer to get to $44,000 per month than it should have. And if I knew what I'm about to tell you in this video, I would have done it 10 times faster. So buckle up, lock in, and take out your crayons because this video is going to be packed with value. But first, before we do, thank you so much to everyone who's been subscribing to the channel. We just hit 50,000 subscribers. It means the absolute world that you are enjoying the videos and the free value that I drop all the time. So be sure to like this video and drop a sub. It will train the YouTube algorithm to show you more content like this that actually teaches you something instead of the brain rot videos that we're all used to watching on YouTube. Let's get into it. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is the blueprint for how I scaled my app to $44,000 per month in monthly recurring revenue. Here it is. Is we're going to take you through the idea, how we validated the idea, how we built it without coding, marketed, and monetized. First, what is the app you're asking? It was a quit vaping app called Puff Count that I built in college. I know what you're thinking. This guy's capping. He didn't actually do that. Yes, yes, we did. We scaled it to $44,000 per month and monthly recurring revenue before we sold the business. It took me a long time to get there. I started the app back in November of 2019. That is when the first sales from Puff Count came in. We made $2 in November of 2019, and then we made $3 the next month. <laughs> And then after $3, this is probably still in the development phase here, or I don't know what I was doing back here. Eventually, I started to market the app and we made 2K for a long time. And then we made 8K one month. And then boom, right here, we started to scale like crazy and we never looked back. I had this app for about three years before I became successful with it. I want that to sink in a little bit. You should not be giving up on your ideas too early. A lot of the times, even with my newest businesses, it takes time to get them off the ground. That's just the nature of the game as an entrepreneur. As you can see, every week we were doing around 10K in revenue before we eventually sold the business. So here it is, my sales. So let's get into how we did this. The idea, how did I come up with the idea? And this is the most important part. This is where you start. And it's very important that your idea for your mobile app is good. I like to come up with mobile app ideas that solve a problem for people. If you solve a problem for people, the marketing and the sales become so much easier because they have some pain that they're feeling that your app solves. So my story with Puff Count started all the way back in college. I was a sophomore in college and overnight, Jewel became the most popular thing ever. You remember those? The small little black rectangles of smoke? Well, everybody got addicted to those, including me. I watched all my friends around me. I was in a fraternity at the time. We were like partying or whatever. I watched everybody slowly get addicted to nicotine and it was through juuling. I knew this would be the future. Previously, before juuling became popular, no one had cigarettes. No one was smoking anything. No one was addicted to nicotine. And overnight, boom, Everybody was addicted to nicotine and it very quickly became a habit that I got caught up into. I felt the health side effects of it. I felt the side effects of my, of my wallet. You know, the, those things weren't cheap. So it was a painful problem. It affected your health and it was expensive. That is a golden problem to solve. And look, I tried to quit vaping, but it was hard. I didn't have the willpower enough to do so, right? Because if you go from vaping a lot, to not vaping at all, sometimes you get a little bit of withdrawals and you, you miss that feeling. So naturally what I tried to do was slowly wean off of the vape, but there was no way to track that, right? So boom, that's when the idea popped into my mind. What if I built an app that would help you slowly reduce your usage? And from that day, Puff Count was born. Once I had the idea for this, and I knew it was a problem amongst my friends, but I really needed to validate this idea before I spent a lot of time building it and spending my money in the development and all that sort of stuff. So I had to further validate the idea. And it was very easy for this product. I went on TikTok, I went on Instagram, I watched the news, and I saw vaping going absolutely mega viral everywhere. 
simple little videos on TikTok were going crazy viral about vaping, same on Instagram, and news was covering it like crazy. Vaping is an epidemic. Vaping is affecting our teens. Everybody's parents were talking about it. Are you vaping, son? You shouldn't be vaping. It was absolutely global. And if we look at the Google trends worldwide, vaping was up and to the right. So I looked at social media. I looked at Google trends. I even looked at Sensor Tower. I went on a Sensor Tower and I looked up other quit smoking apps and I saw that they were making a boatload of money. That is all I needed. I saw other competitors in the space. And mind you, these other competitors were only focused on cigarettes. There was nothing centered around vaping. So we had competitors making good money. It was going viral on social media. It was a worldwide epidemic. The news was covering it. These are all the key elements that you need for an amazing app idea. I knew it would work. I didn't need to do any testing. I didn't need to MVP and run paid out. I didn't need to do any of that. I knew the idea was fire because guess what? Marketing is the most important part of a mobile app idea. If you can market your app, it doesn't matter how good or bad it is, you will make money. And I knew the marketing was on lock. So we had the idea. Now, how did we build it? I'm a lazy guy. I don't want to code. I don't want to do a ton of work, especially when I was in college. I was even lazier back then. So what I did was I sketched out what the app should look like on a piece of paper. Simple sketch. And then I uploaded the sketch to 99designs. I'm going to show you that that design contest looked like right now. As I just showed you, we had the sketch, and this is a very simple three-step process that I followed. Sketch to 99 designs to outsource developer. The easiest, fastest way to build an app without writing a single line of code. By the way, if you want my full mobile app tech stack that I use to build and scale this app, I will have that linked in the description. It includes all the tools from your business setup to research, design, development, optimization, marketing, and scaling, absolutely everything you need. This is a master list of all of the mobile app tools and it will be in the description. So we had the sketch and then we built a 99 designs contest. And I'm going to show you what this brief looked like. So I explained what my product was, what I wanted it to look like. I had a description of all the screens and then boom, here are my original sketches from six years ago. <laughs> I drew on a piece of paper what I wanted the app to look like. And then I launched this contest. And our guy, George Will, knocked it out of the park. We got 102 different designs from different designers. A lot of these you won't be able to see, but we can click through a couple here and you'll get the idea. Boom, this is one design that came in, obviously didn't win. We had all of these different designs come in and I was able to pick the best. And obviously some of these weren't very good, but that's okay because we got to see them all and eventually we picked the winner. And this was our winner, this guy named George. And this is what the app eventually looked like when I launched it. So I took these UI designs that I got from our man, George Will, and I put them into Figma. And obviously there's a lot more screens here that you see. These were all future updates, but the app started very simple in just a couple screens. And I mapped them out where they would go, how they would interact with each other. And I mapped them out on Figma. And the greatest thing about Figma is you can come in here, even if you're not a talented designer, and you can go and you can start to edit these things if you need to, right? So you can take this initial design from your 99 designs contest and you can make small adjustments and you can build new screens all on your own, right? You don't need another designer. You don't even need to hire a designer to make small adjustments to your UI. So I laid out the entire wireframe on Figma like this, and then it was time to hire a developer. And I know what you might be thinking, Steven, why on earth would you hire a developer when you could just build it with AI? For sure you can. But back in 2019, when I built this app, AI coding tools did not exist. ChatGPT did not exist. So for the purposes of this video, I'm going to be explaining how I hired a developer. I dropped a full hour long video explaining my exact process of building apps with AI. So if you want to watch that, it's going to be in the description somewhere. So go check that out. But yes, I hired a developer and let me paint the picture for you. I was fresh out of college at this point when I started to get puff count like off the ground. I was working on five. I had some disposable income from my job. I was living with roommates. So it made sense for me to outsource this, to hire someone to focus on this app full time while I did my nine to five and I did all my other whatever college stuff that I was doing back then. Who knows? It made sense for me to hire someone, get it done perfectly, get it done quickly, get it done professionally so that I could focus on what I knew I was good at, which is marketing. Before we get into how to hire, I think it's very important that you understand this concept of building an MVP because hiring and outsourcing talent can be expensive, but not if you do it correctly. The first version of your app should be dead simple. One feature, that's all you need. 
What is that one feature? What is the main feature that is important for your app? And this is exactly what I did. I hopped on a call with four, five, six developers even, and I talked to every single one of them. I asked them important questions like, what's your history been? What's your experience building apps? How long is this gonna take you? How much money is this gonna cost me to build? And after you talk to five or six people, you have a very good understanding of who is the best option. Did they present well? Are they on camera? Do they have ideas about your product? Are they excited about your project? All of these things matter. And maybe money is the most important thing. Well, after you talk to five, six, seven, eight people, they will give you an itemized list of how much all the features are going to cost. And based on their quotes, you can go with the developer who costs the least or the one that you like the, or whatever it is, right? It's your choice. But this is the most important part. You need to understand how much each one of these developers is going to cost, how long it's going to take them and how much each feature costs. The first person you talk to might char try to charge you 20 grand. Maybe they're just trying to take advantage of you. But maybe the fifth person you talk to is like, oh, I can knock this out for 2K, 3K, whatever it is, right? You need to talk to multiple people. You need to get these itemized quotes to understand what features in your app are going to cost what. And that is how you control your cost. And that is how I hired my first app development team. Now we have a developer and I know this can be overwhelming at first glance, but I've put together a group of founders. We meet three times a week and we talk everything about app development from idea to marketing, to scale, to paywalls, to onboarding. We talk about absolutely everything in this group. So if you want to join in and you want to join this driven group of app founders, that link is going to be in the description. We will help you build and scale your mobile app. Whether you're hiring developers or whether you're building with AI, we have founders in the group who are at all stages and we learn together. So let's move on to the marketing. How did I market the app to get users? Staying on theme with my broke, just out of college self with a nine to five that was barely paying me anything, I couldn't hire creators. I couldn't run paid ads. I simply did not have enough money to do all that. So what did I do? I got out my phone and I started filming TikToks. And back in 2020, this was not the most popular thing to do. It was actually cringe, people might say but it worked out. And I eventually grew the account on TikTok to 120,000 followers, 6.3 million likes across all of our videos, over 50 million organic views. It was absolutely crazy, but it did not start that way. In the beginning, this is my personal TikTok account. And you can see how bad these videos truly were. Like, look at this. This would never work nowadays. But these are things that I built. This is my little brother. You should use Puff Count, available in the App Store. Like, I made the simplest, dumbest videos back in the day, but I just kept working and I committed to making one video every single day. Actually, very quickly, our third video blew up 80,000 views. Our fifth video, 80,000 views. And this when the installs started to come in. And this entire time I was doing market research, I was looking at other TikToks that were going viral in my niche. And eventually I came across this one video where someone was dropping a vape in a glass of water, went absolutely ballistic. So I copied that same format, simple text on screen, and it absolutely crushed. A little call to action at the end there. So I committed to making a video every single day. And that's exactly what I did for years on end. I recruited my friends. I made dumb videos in my apartment, but it worked. And this is how I got my app off of the ground. But the story doesn't end there because although I was getting millions and millions of views on my TikToks, I still wasn't making that much money. Let's see, this one got 3.6 million views. This was in 2021, January of 2021. January of 2021. Yep, that was our first big bump here. We went from $200. <laughs> per week, almost $1,000. So this was our first $1,000 week after this video right here. But on the grand scheme of things, that wasn't a lot, right? We scaled a ton further. And that's where the next part is gonna come in when we scaled with paid ads. We figured out the onboarding, figured out the hard pay wall. Back when I was making these videos, I had no idea how to monetize my app. I didn't know what I was doing. Although we were getting a ton of installs January, 2021, yeah, we got 20,000 installs that one day. I didn't know how to turn those installs into revenue, but I kept grinding. I kept making content. I kept copying the formats that were working and eventually I built up this amazing library of content that I was able to then take and run on paid ads in the future. So we went crazy on organic content. I made videos until... <laughs> I couldn't possibly make videos anymore. And I realized, okay, I need to outsource this video making process. And that is when I started to hire creators. And the interesting thing about our creator strategy back in the day is we only paid creators if they got views. And we went through a very distorted process to do this. I had to DM a ton of creators. I had to go on all these different marketplaces and hire creators. It was an absolute pain, but that is exactly why I built my new project, which is posted. And you can hire creators on a performance only basis. You can launch a deal for free and you only pay for what you love. Creators will make content for you upfront for free and you only pay for what you love 
I wish I had this back in the day, but this is exactly why we built Posted. If you want to check it out, go to postedapp.com. So I had my organic content. I had creators making content for me. I would only pay them if their video was really good. And then eventually I was able to take all this content, both from my TikTok and from the creators that we hired. And I was able to scale on paid ads. Paid ads is going to be a video in itself. And I recently dropped a video on my exact paid ad strategy. That is also going to be in the description somewhere. So check that out. But this is how we were really able to scale. Now, the most important part, how did we monetize? Because again, even though we were getting all these installs, our sales were still very low. If we go to the monthly, our sales were still at only $2,000 per month, maybe around $3,000 per month until I figured out the monetization strategy. And that is very simple. In your app, for it to be successful, you need an onboarding and a hard paywall, and you need to charge recurring subscriptions. I'm gonna show you exactly what that looks like. Bring it back to the Figma. So before I had an onboarding and I had a hard paywall, people would just come into the app and I would rely on them to be upsold, right? This is our old paywall, try for free, then just $3.99 per month. We were only charging $4 per month. This did not make me any money, as you saw. We were getting millions of views, on TikTok, we weren't making any money until I figured out how to build an onboarding. And this is it. We had the welcome screens, we had the value screens, we had a social proof screen, and then we made the users take a survey. What brings you to the app? How long have you been vaping? Have you tried to quit before? How often do you feel the desire to vape? Asking specific questions to make the user feel their pain, feel their problem more. I want the user to think about their problem. I want them to think about their vape usage. I want them to understand that we are a product that will help them quit. How much money do you spend per month on vaping? Whoa, your average yearly spend is this. Puff count will help you quit. So we're gonna create your quit plan and then boom, they hit the hard paywall. Ignore the X's here, we did not have those, but the user had to start their free trial in order to get into the app. So we had this long onboarding, reminding them of their pain, of their problem, letting them know that Puff Count can fix it, and then boom, Puff Count will help you. Quit for real this time. Try it for free. You get three days for free, but you need to opt in to the free trial. We made users commit to the quit and opt in to the free trial. And the second we implemented that, boom, our sales jumped from 3K to 14K per month. And then we went to 20 and then 28 and then 30 and then 35 and then 40 and then 44. And we eventually sold the business by implementing this onboarding and this hard paywall strategy. We were able to successfully scale on paid ads and scale the business to 44 K per month. And that's my strategy. That is the spark notes version of it. I recorded a full hour long video explaining my exact process in detail again on how to ideate, build, scale, and eventually exit mobile apps. That is gonna be in the description, but this is my process. Very simple, easy to follow. You don't need to know how to code. This is exactly how you build winning mobile apps. And I've done it time and time again. My latest mobile app posted that I built using these exact same strategies that I showed you in this video. That app is about to cross $1 million in revenue. We did over $100,000 last month in sales following this exact strategy. You don't need to be a wizard. You don't need to know how to code. You don't need to be a marketing genius. You just need dedication and effort and you too can build and scale a mobile app. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'm going to be dropping value like this all the time. So like the video if you enjoyed and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.